Hey, this is Rob, founder of Coifin. I wanted to tell you about two new exciting features that we just released related to graphing fundamental and valuation series. First, you can now transform any series into growth rates, index performance, and drawdown. Second, you can now look at a valuation series versus its average and standard deviation bands over history. Let me show you how it works. Let's start out with graph transformations, which are located in historical graph here in the G-chart. I'm going to select a unsafe template just to clear the series. Now I have a price chart. Let's uh, say I want to look at micro Micron's cyclicality on a revenue basis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add revenue LTM, which is last 12 months. And I'm also going to add another series called revenue LTM. Except this time, I'm going to click on the settings panel in the second tab. And then you can see where you can transform the data. So here, instead of as reported, I'm going to change this to quarter on quarter growth. I'll have two series now. One is the total revenue number and the other one is the total revenue number, but the quarter on quarter percentage change of that number. Now, these uh, series probably shouldn't be together because they're a little bit noisy. So let me just put the, the growth series on another pane. And here it is. And the other thing I want to do is instead of looking at this as a line chart, I'm going to change this to a bar chart to make it easier to see every single change for every single quarter. So this now gives us a pretty good view of Micron's total revenue and then how that total revenue changes on a quarter over quarter basis for the LTM measure. And you could now see this really nice cyclicality in the business. And you could also see that up until 2009, the business was a lot less cyclical. It was a lot more spatchy in terms of when the growth was uh, growing and not growing. Um, and the business has become much more cyclical. There's a bunch of reasons for it. One is that the semiconductor industry has consolidated a lot. Um, so you just have these much longer drawn out cycles uh, that are more dependent on macro factors than they were on company specific factors for 2009. The other thing that you can see here is just glancing at this chart, the best time to buy Micron is when revenue is declining the most. So for example, if we go back to 2009, um, once you had this decline, this was a good time to buy Micron. When you had this revenue decline, this was a good time to buy Micron. When you had this revenue decline, this was a good time. And this was a good time to buy Micron as well. And then on the flip side, um, as revenue growth is peaking, that was a pretty good time to sell Micron. So it looks like if we go back in 2010, this was the top of the stock in 2014. This was close to the top of the stock in 2018. This was uh, close to the top of the stock and similar in sort of this cycle where you had the growth start uh, decelerating and peaked uh, at kind of in the beginning of 2021. And that's when the stock peaked. So this this growth rate really allows you to visualize these changes over time much easier than just looking at the traditional revenue number. The other thing that you could do here is you could actually add a series that we call forward rolling change. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to at every point in time calculate the 12 month forward return of the stock. Obviously, we don't know what that is today because we don't know the future, but historically we could see kind of what what happens. And this sort of confirms what we just observed that when the stock has negative revenue growth, that's actually a pretty good time to get forward 12 month returns. And when the stock has really high revenue growth, that's actually a pretty bad time to own a stock for the next 12 month basis. Usually that's the peak in a stock. So this forward one year change is really useful to look at. The other thing that you may want to do is save this as a template. So now that I have this laid out, I don't want to recreate it every time. So what I want to maybe uh, save this as revenue, growth and performance. And now that I have this as a as a template, when I go back to my homepage, when I log into Coifin, I can just look this up for a any stock and I don't need to type out all the series. So here I would just put in revenue, growth, and performance and here it is down here and now the g chart is going to load up with um, all these tickers and now that this is my template i could just pick it anytime i want and i don't need to recreate it every time for every single stock 
I wanted to show you some other transformations that you can do in addition to quote on quarter change. So we have a bunch of these, including the year on year percentage change instead of the quarter on quarter. We have also, um, in addition to percentage change, we have the regular dollar amount change. So you could look at the year on year dollar amount change or the quarter on quarter dollar amount change. We have performance, which shows the uh, performance growth starting at zero to uh, to compare two series. We have the cumulative, which adds up all the values from the start date, the percent drawdown from all time peak, uh, that's the percent decline from the highest value ever. The drawdown percent from peak is the percentage change from the peak on the graph. So not from all time high, but just the peak that's within the range of the graph. So if you have a five year chart, this is just gonna show you the percentage decline from the highest point over the past five years. And then same thing for the change values instead of the percent values. So those are all kind of different things that you could look at for these transformations. Let me show you how these cumulative works. So if I just select cumulative here um, instead of percent change, and I'm just going to delete this. So now I'd be able to, I'm just going to change this to a line because it's a little bit easier to see. Now I'll be able to compare, let's say, NVIDIA versus Micron, um, and I'll be able to see kind of how the stocks, how the, the revenue numbers are growing over time. And, and sorry, I selected cumulative here. I actually meant to select the performance. And now what we can see is the performance on two different axes. I'm just gonna combine these on the same axes. I'm gonna click on the Y axis, do the grouping on. So these are now gonna be grouped. And you can see here that over the past 10 years, so starting 10 years ago, this is starting at zero. NVIDIA's revenue grew 615% and Micron's revenue grew 300%. So this is a great way to normalize any sort of fundamental series that you want to compare across two companies. And this will show you how that growth rate changes over time. The other feature that I wanted to highlight is the statistical bands. So um, let me go back to looking at Micron as my example. And in here, um, you could do the statistical bands on a variety of fundamental metrics, but let me do um, EV to EBITDA as a valuation measure to show you what I mean. So now that I have my EV to EBITDA measure here, what, and I'm just gonna get rid of this, what the statistical bands are gonna allow me to do is show me over time what's the mean, the standard deviation, and they're located right here under the setting tabs as well. So here I can sort of select my mean plus one standard deviation plus two standard deviations. And so now it would, that'll show me kind of like where the current value lies relative to the history. And so over the past 20 years, I could see that Micron's sort of trading in the middle. And then if I pull up the historical price graph and let's say I wanted to kind of compare, is there any relationship with when this trades below its mean? When Micron traded uh, below one standard deviations, which is 2.7 times on an EVD EBITDA scale, um, that was actually a pretty good time to own the stock, or that was a, a local low and provided a lot of valuation support. So that was kind of like the case here. It was, it was sort of the case here, although the stock did make new lows, but you could see kind of like what that valuation range is over time. One thing I wanted to highlight is that on, um, uh, on these valuation measures, you probably want to look at it on a linear basis, not a log basis. So just change this to linear. I'm just going to click out over here. And then if you, if you zoom in to get rid of this kind of like point that probably was a little bit outside the historical range, you see this really, these clean bands where you can now see where the stock is trading relative to history. And it does look like in, in July, in June, July, when the stock was trading at about two and a half times on EVD EBITDA basis, this was a really nice kind of zone for, for buying support. Now that, I'd say now that the EVD EBITDA moved up to the average or close to the average, that's probably much less valuation support that than we've than we saw in sort of the, the June timeframe. And so given what we looked at before, which is that you don't want to own Micron until revenue starts turning negative, this is probably not a great level to, to buy Micron. And by the way, you can also have these statistical measures on the transformations. So for example, if I had uh, total revenue here, again, let me choose total revenue LTM, and I'm just going to transform this as a year on year growth and look at the bars. So now we see the year on year growth of revenue. I could also add statistical bands to this transformation. So now I could see kind of what the mean and uh, one standard deviation is. So I could see that on average, 
Micron grows 16% per on, on a quarter over quarter basis over the past 20 years. And revenue growth is actually now 27% or has been 27% in the last quarter. And that's relative to history much higher. So again, because Micron is a cyclical stock, we want to be buying it when it's growing negatively and looking for that recovery. Um, and so right now, kind of given where we are in the cycle and given the historical cyclicality of the stock, we actually want to wait and buy the stock when revenue is going negative. And these statistical bands really help us identify when those points are in time. Well, I hope these enhancements will make it easier and faster for you to research companies and identify opportunities. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.